Excel 2016, Module 6, Part 5. In this segment, we are going to be working with multiple workbooks. We're going to be linking formulas to those workbooks so that we can have one worksheet that's going to add up information that's in several different workbooks or different files. So let's go ahead and get back into our Michigan workbook. You want to make sure, and I'm going to go ahead and close this other one. You want to make sure when we're working with these that as we open them, you want the summary worksheet to be the active worksheet in each of the workbooks that we open. So we are going to open up and I'm going to the files that were on your Q drive and I'm going to open up the one called Petoskey. Make sure you enable editing and then you want to go to the summary workbook. Once you've done that, we'll go ahead and open up the file called Flint. And again, we're going to enable editing and then go to our summary workbook worksheet. Next, we are going to open up the worksheet that says UC totals. And we will enable editing and again go to our summary workbook. So anytime that you have multiple workbooks open in Excel, you'll have several things that you can see. First of all, you can see there are multiple pictures of Excel down here. Sometimes they will be tiled, like you see here. Sometimes you will have four different buttons. If you have tiles, if you hover over them, you can then click on the file that you want to look at. So that's one way of moving between your workbooks. Another way is on the view You'll notice here it says switch windows. When I click that drop down arrow, it shows me all of the workbooks that I have. I'm going to make the UC totals active. Another thing you can do with the view is you can look at them all at the same time. So let's click on this Arrange All. It's asking us here how we want them arranged on the screen. And tiled is going to lay them all out and in the tile approach, kind of like your Windows 10 or Windows 8 was. Horizontal and vertical are going to lay them out side by side or above each other. Cascade is going to make them look like this where they're stacked on top of each other like you have this button down here. We're going to choose Tiled. And the reason we would do this is because we want to see each worksheet because when we're entering formulas, it's going to be much easier to enter them 
if we can see all the worksheets at one time. In each ribbon, or in each window, I'm going to collapse the ribbon. By doing this, I am able to see a little more, a little more information. You do have to click on things multiple times because the first click changes me to that file. The second click, I get it, collapses the window or the ribbon. Okay, so you do have to click several times usually. Okay, we are going to make the UC totals the active workbook. And now we're going to start creating some formulas that will access the information in the other workbooks. So we're going to start out with an equal sign. And then we're going to click on one of the worksheets. In this example, we clicked on Flint. Click on it once to make it active, once to select the cell, which is B6. Then type the plus sign, because we are adding to that, and click in the second one. Again, you have to click twice once to make it the active workbook and once to select the cell and then add a plus and select the third workbook so once to select it and once to select the cell next do not click anywhere else once you have finished clicking in the other three do not click back into the original worksheet where you were typing the formula. Hit enter and it will calculate a total. So let's go ahead and do the same thing in quarters two, three, and four. So we're going to click in quarter two, which is C6, say equals. We're going to add cell C6 in each of the files. So you always have to type the plus sign. And you will always click twice. The first time selects the file. The second time selects the cell. Do the same thing for quarters three and four. And then finally, quarter four. You always have to start with the equal sign because every formula and function does begin with the equal sign. Here's that on this first one, I missed the actual cell. It looks as though I did on Petoskey as well. 
And now I have that summary in there twice, so we'll get rid of that. Let's just go ahead and start this formula over. Equals, click on the first one, and then click on the cell, add a plus, the second one, plus the third one. Okay, so let's go ahead now and we're going to maximize this particular worksheet, the UC totals. This button here will minimize or maximize. Okay, I want to see the entire worksheet. I'm going to go ahead and pin my ribbon back down. So in order to do that, what you want to do is click on one of the ribbon tabs, come over here and click your pin. So let's take a look at this formula. When you look at a formula that is linking to another workbook, there's a few things you should see. First of all, it does have the name of the file in square brackets, followed by the worksheet name, followed by the exclamation point, and then the cell reference. But what you should also notice is that this defaults cell references as absolute. They do not have to stay absolute. So if you're going to copy these formulas, you have to change the referencing to make it the way you want it, absolute or relative. And in this case, we want it to be relative so that the formulas will copy down the columns. It's important to remember, just like when we were copying cell reference or formulas that referenced other worksheets, the worksheet name stayed constant when you copied the formula. The same thing happens here. The file name will remain constant. The worksheet will remain concert, uh, constant excuse me, and the cell will either change or remain constant depending on whether it is absolute or relative. Now in this case, since we need all of those to copy down, you need to make sure you change all three cell references to be relative. And we're going to do that in each of these formulas for all four quarters. You need to make sure you change um, all three cell references in all of the formulas. You want to make them all relative. Okay, so again, we have one more formula. We have to delete the absolute referencing if we want to copy the formulas. If you don't want to copy them, then you can leave it absolute. But in this case, it would be much easier to simply drag this down and copy that row of formulas so that it adds all of them up. So relative referencing makes much more sense and it allows us to copy them.
Next, we would want to create our totals over here. So we're going to go ahead and use the auto sum. And then drag that down all the way to our total row. We will use the auto sum here in a B12 and copy that over as well. And the last thing we'd want to do is we would want to go ahead and do some formatting. So what I'm going to do is on this total row, I am going to use a top bottom with a double bottom, double bottom, excuse me. I'm also going to form that, format that as accounting with zero decimals. This top row, I'm going to choose accounting with zero decimals. And the center numbers, I will make those comma formatting with no decimal places. I'm going to change this slightly and make the total column all be in accounting format with no decimals. So you can see that now these formulas are creating or generating answers by pulling information from three different files into this new one. So let's take a look at the links and how that works. If I go to data and I look at this edit links, each file is going to be listed here that has a formula that is referencing it. So you'll only see the files here that are actually used in formulas. If you change the underlying data in any of those other files, they will automatically update the totals in this workbook. You can set these up so that they don't update automatically, but it does default to automatic which means anytime you open this totals worksheet, whether or not the other workbooks are open, it will go out, seek out the information from those workbooks and get the answers. There are a few things to be aware of. First of all, notice here, it is tracking the location of the files as well as the file names. So if someone moves a file or renames a file, your formulas will no longer work. Okay, let's go ahead and look at this. I'm going to close this. I'm going to save these changes. And we're going to close this file. Now, if I go back and I open it back up, if 
file, open, my UC totals. The information is still there. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and close these other ones and we'll save them as we close them. Let's make a change. Okay, let's go to Jackson here. We're going to go to the quarter four worksheet. And we are going to change the value that is in retail right now it says eighteen Seventy-five. We are going to make that nineteen twenty-five. It changed that answer, which then in turn changed the answer on our summary. So let's go ahead and save that and we'll close it. Now when I open up Excel, I'm going to open up Excel and I'm going to select to open up the UC totals. Now notice it says we have automatic update of links and it's currently disabled. So you want to say enable that content. And notice it immediately changed quarter four, both the quarter four number and the total for retail. So it located that information and then it updated it. Let's take a look at managing those links. So again, we're going to go to data. And we're going to go to edit links. So we've got that information there. You can see the name of the file, the location of the file. It is important that they do not be moved or changed. Okay. If I want to stop the updates, so if I want to change this so that instead of updating all the time, I want it to stop. I'm going to do something called breaking the links. Notice here it tells us breaking links will permanently convert these formulas. They will no longer be formulas that are linking to those files. They will become just the numbers that are in the cells. So if I say yes and I break the links, notice we have lost the information here. And if you look in the cells, you see numbers and no longer see formulas. So if I was getting ready to do a presentation to the board and perhaps I wanted to keep a record of the exact numbers that were presented to the board and I didn't want to take the chance that one of the other files would be modified and my numbers would be changed, I could break the links and it would store them exactly the way they were. So we're going to do a file save as and I'm going to call this UC total and I'm going to call it break. 
That way we know it still had it had the leaks broke. Now once you break the links, this is not a function that you can undo. The only way to get those back would be to open up the file and re all the other files, excuse me, and recreate the formulas. Once you break the links, they are gone. So that's all there is to working with multiple workbooks and linking them in formulas. Notice also, once you break the links, if you have no links in your file to other workbooks, this edit links option will be grayed out. You won't have access to it. In the next video, we're going to look at working with hyperlinks.